And yeah, no, you will step up, speak, yeah. finish your remarks, come back, give me the mic. Okay. Adam, are you ready? Okay. Good stuff for you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'm David Hector, president of the American Federation of Teachers here in Michigan. But it's not working. Your mic. Okay. I'm still David Hecker, president, and, and I hope I'm still president of the American Federation of Teachers here in Michigan. It is fantastic to be in Kalamazoo, where we proudly represent educators at KVCC and Western Michigan University. And it's also fan fantastic to be here in Kalamazoo, we, where we're going to take a fantastic state representative and make that fantastic state representative a fantastic United States Congressperson. <laughs> and we're gonna replace him in the State House. And we're not gonna miss a beat with having the kind of quality that we need and we will have in the State House with Julie Rogers. <laughs> and of course, the entire ticket from President Biden, Vice President, I'm getting optimistic here, President Biden, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, and our great United States Senator, Gary Peters, and down the line. Uh, so we're in the final, the final push here, uh, the final few weeks. Uh, a lot of people have voted, but a lot of people are still going to get out there and vote. And obviously, a number of people are going to vote on Election Day, November 3rd. So. You know, we, we know when we talk like this and it's sitting like this, we preach to the choir. You're the people who are out here. You're the ones doing all the work. And we just want to say thank you to everybody for everything that you're doing to make sure that from the top of the ticket and Vice President Biden all the way through the ticket, to John and Julie and everybody else, that thanks to you, we have a tremendous win when they finish counting those votes whenever they finish counting those votes. So thank you for all that you do, and thank you for coming out today. Thank you, David. So I am glad to be in Michigan. I'm really glad to be in Kalamazoo. You know, for me, who grew up in uh, New York, Rockland County, Michigan was always the place where all our cars were made. That if you didn't get a car from Michigan, then it wasn't a car. Like you couldn't get it somewhere else. And I remember once kind of going, I, where Rockland County is right by the New Jersey border. And I remember there is a big car plant in Mawa, New Jersey. And we were on one of those big roads and it was one of those, you know, when I was young. And I remember asking my parents, because our family was always a union family. I asked my parents, I'm like, why is there a car company? There's like a factory here for cars. I thought the only place you could get cars was from Michigan. <laughs> but that, the, the reason I start there is because if you think about the kind of post or even pre to post World War II generations. And sorry, I am a social studies teacher. And look, you can maybe even use this in terms of your Zoom social studies classes. <laughs> that the, the made in America and the manufacturing that was done in America was part of America's identity. And that was part of Michigan's identity, and it's also part of a middle class identity, and part of an identity that said that if we worked hard and played by the rules, that we could actually do better than our parents' generation, and that our kids' generation could do better than our generation, our grandkids' generation could do better than that. 
And what has happened in the last 20 or 30 years is that that basic social covenant has been violated and broken. And you know this, you hear this in Kalamazoo all the time. And you hear this sometimes in what people say about Democrats. But what has really happened in this country is that that social contract has been broken and for years and years and years, starting with Reagan, they have tried to break that covenant and then they have tried to look, turn around and say, oh, Democrats are responsible for it. Now, I'm not saying that Democrats didn't have some responsibility and some of the trade deals were not good and some of the ideas about going forward and not thinking about people who have been coal miners or steel workers or whatever. So I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to wear rose colored glasses. But if you think about the last four years and you think about the last two to four years in Michigan itself, what the heck happened in Flint? How dare there not be an investment in infrastructure to make sure the water was clear and clean. What happened in terms of manufacturing? How come there's tax cuts for the rich each and every year under Republican administrations as opposed to investment in manufacturing so we can actually have made in America and made in America competitively with a unionized workforce that has a right to still have a pension and health care. How is it that there is not a national reaction of protest and, 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 and criticism when a sitting governor in this state is threatened with kidnapping and an assassination? How is it that everyone in the, who are Republicans up and down the line, from Trump to Betsy DeVos, don't say, no, that is wrong, white supremacy is wrong, and we are going to stop that. I raise these things because this current president focuses on three things. Chaos, fear, and division. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. He focuses on four things. Chaos, fear, division, and himself. What this election is about, both Julie and John, oh, I'm sorry, I'll get it. Both Julie and John, Gary Peters, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, it's about hope and fairness and creating positive change. What this election is about is to actually have a president who cares about people, all of us, rather than just caring about himself. What this election is about is about an economy that is about all of us, not one that is just about the rich. Like we saw just in the last couple of days with the new reporting from the New York Times that suggested as Trump was saying, oh, no big deal about COVID, he was telling his donors how bad it is and how bad it was. On any issue, whether it is a living wage, a right to a union, retirement security, yes. health care as a right, or frankly, the one I deal with every single day, which is how are we going to fight the virus and make sure that kids can go back to school safely <laughs> instead of having an administration that has no plan and refuse to give us any resources? How do we make sure parents and teachers alike don't, are not racked with agita and fear because of chaos 
And how do we make sure we have a situation in this country where we have schools that can open safely, where there is not a pitting of life versus learning? Whichever issue we care about, it comes down to, are we going to move forward with hope and fairness and positive change so that Michigan can become once again that kind of innovative, muscular place in this country that makes things and does things and, 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 and does what we need to do in the country? Or are we going to keep on having, as we've had in the last four years, this fear fest, this chaos? That's why we need Julie in the state senate. State Senate, State House. No, 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 never mind. In the State House. Oh boy, with you in the State Senate. Sean has the State Senate. Julie's going to have the State House. My apologies. And that's why we need John in the House of Representatives. We need to make sure. That when Joe Biden is president, when Kamala Harris is vice president, they can have people who are working with them to get the measures that we need in terms of health care, in terms of unions, in terms of education. It's a huge agenda. But I'm going to end with this one piece. You see the polls. You know where Michiganders are right now. If we vote, we win. It is the reason why Trump is throwing whatever shade and intimidation and bullying to stop that. If we vote, we win. If we vote, health care gets better. If we vote, we get the resources for schools. If we vote, working people have the right to get back to that dream of each generation things get better and better. But that's why we need John. That's why we need Julie. And that's why we need you to be out there every day, safely, with masks on, being visible, getting lit at, talking to your colleagues, talking to your friends, to get out the vote. Thank you very much. All right, we stand warm out there? Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to say, y'all know that I come from a family of teachers and educators. So having the endorsement of teachers and educators means the world to me. And here's something I learned. My parents always told me, you got to do your homework so you're ready for the test. And you all have helped me do the work for the last six years. You know that as a legislator, I've been fighting for a Michigan that invests in our public schools. And I'm so proud to carry that fight onto Congress and make sure that we're finally putting an end to the DeVos agenda because it's time to retire Betsy DeVos. You know, I've done the homework when it comes to fighting for working people, for small businesses. You know, I've done the homework in terms of standing up for the environment in a state where we still can't drink the water in every one of our homes, we've got work to do. And you know that I've done the work, when it, the homework, when it comes to health care. Health care is on the ballot in the best and most simple debate uh, difference between me and Mr. Upton is that I believe more people should have health care, and he votes to take it away. That's not right. So here's the deal. You do the homework so you pass the test. And the big test is coming up on November 3rd. Mr. Upton hasn't done the homework, which is why after 34 years, the best thing he can deliver is lies in advertisement, attacks on character, and hiding behind super PACs to do his homophobic bidding. That's not right. So I need your help. 
because it turns out this isn't just a single person project. This isn't even small group work. Y'all, yeah, this is gonna take a big team. So the test is coming. And I know that with your help, we're gonna get over the finish line. We're gonna win a linchpin seat. And at the end of the day, we're gonna make sure that Michigan and our country is just a little bit better for everybody that's coming behind. This is the right team to get the work done, so let's go do it. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Sean McCann. I'm your state senator for Kalamazoo County. Thanks for letting me say a couple of quick words today. My mom uh, became a widow two years ago, right before I was elected to the state senate. And her husband, my stepfather, wasn't able to make it. He was able to help provide for her, but she had been a teacher for most of her life. And so therefore, mom had a pension. And then she also had, fortunately, Social Security, two of those key pieces that we rely on to keep us in good stead when we retire and go into our elder years. And if she hadn't had that pension that was negotiated by teachers unions, I'd be a little worried about mom, but she's okay. Mom's okay right now because we all took care of each other, which is what we do in a progressive country. Now, if you think about what John Engler and Rick Snyder and the Michigan legislature and Betsy DeVos and the DeVos family have done over those same decades that my mom's been retired to try to dismantle supports for teachers, to degrade the occupation of being a teacher, and to defund schools in Michigan, it's been a very planned and concentrated agenda. And we know the DeVosses have tried to divert tax dollars to private schools, religious schools, charter schools, and make those for profit. And even, you know, nonprofit schools, those, those funds aren't going to teachers in the nonprofit charter schools. And they've worked to raid the school aid fund that Michigan voters passed in Proposal A decades ago that's meant for schools, our kids, and our teachers. And now we have on top of that President Trump's mismanagement of the whole COVID crisis, his whole administration, and I got my kids with me here today. They had a half day of school in front of the video. And don't think that every day that we are faced with the challenges that parents are faced with right now, that we wish they were back in school and we think of the fact that if this pandemic had been managed better, this wouldn't be the case today. So I need, we, we elected in 2018 along with myself, an ally for you, K-12 schools and teachers. We elected a great governor in Michigan who is also an ally to schools and teachers. And that's a step in the right direction, but we've got another great opportunity today and you all know it. We've got an opportunity to flip the state house. And that road goes right through Kalamazoo County, right into the 61st House District, and we need to elect Christine Morris to that seat. So please do everything you can up and down the ticket to have our friends get elected to restore resources and support to our teachers and our public schools. You all, does, does Randy know, do you know the Kalamazoo Promise? We all know the Kalamazoo yeah. Promise, right? Yeah. That's the kind of resources we need in all of our public schools, and that's the path we can go down when we turn Michigan, Kalamazoo County, 6th Congressional District, and the 61st House seat blue. Let's go do it. Thanks, Senator. I'm Christine Morse. I'm running for the 61st State House seat right on the edge of Dooley's district. 
It is one of the top five to flip in the state in order to achieve a Democratic majority. It is critical this year to flip this seat. If we want education for fund funding for education, if we want to protect our workers, if we want health care that is affordable and accessible, we must flip this state house seat. Now, I have three kids, and, and Randy mentioned the American dream feels further and further away, I think, for the generations as we move on. And that's because we're not investing in our people in the state. And, and it's scary as a mother. I want my kids to have the same opportunities to succeed that I did, and that's vanishing. We need to fight. We need to fight for the people of this state. We need to fight to keep them healthy. We need to fight for leaders who will, be, who will have the people in top of mind for whatever they do. And it's, I, I appreciate every one of you that's here today. I know you all know how important this state house seat is. And um, it's been such a team effort. I've been so inspired by all of your support. And I will tell you, we will not stop until November 3rd. We will be out every day. We will knock doors. We will be on TV. We will be on the me social media. We're not going to stop. And we need every one of you to be a part of this process. No, full stop, November 3rd. Thanks, everybody. And let's do it. Thank you, everyone. I'm so energized. We're going to get Christine elected. I need help getting over the finish line, too. My name is Julie Rogers. I'm the Democratic nominee for State House to follow in John Holdley's footsteps. We really need to turn out the blue wave. Thank you to my friend and colleague, County Commissioner Meredith Place over here, who's running for county clerk. And we're going to flip this to be a Democratic clerk. We also have Thomas Whitener. He's running for treasurer. And we're going to have a blue wave and get all of our folks up and down the ticket elected with all of your hope. As, as Representative Hoadley said, this is not a one-person game, so we need everyone's help. We need you to drag your neighbors to the polls. We need everyone to help us turn it out. I want to say a really quick story, and then we're going to go knock some doors. My mother is my inspiration. She's out on the doors for me right now, and she is a teacher, and she was a teacher, a full-time professor at KVCC. Many of you KVCC folks are here today. Thank you to KVCC and Western and K. But she was a full-time professor, and she enjoyed a lot of benefits. And she realized that her part-time associates did not have those same benefits. And so she got to work after she retired and helped organize the part-time instructor union at KVCC because she knew that we needed to fight for all workers, for all teachers, up and down, no matter how many hours you put in, you deserve health care. So thank you to all of you who put in your work. We are here to protect you. We are here to get you the PPE you need, and we need to flip the house blue to do those things. So thank you so much for your support. Let's go blue. Well, thank you, everyone. I really want to thank our AFT great national president, Randy Weingarten, for bringing the best to Kalamazoo. And with Randy, Fred Ingram, our new Secretary Treasurer of the National AFT. Thank you, Fred, for coming to Kalamazoo. And as everyone said, we're going to elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, but we're also going to elect John, we're going to elect Christine, we're going to elect Julie. Sean gets a pass this year. He's helping everybody else get elected. And thank you all, because you are the key. We have fantastic candidates but they don't get in without you. So thank you so much for everything you do. Go Blue!